Hey, what's going on? In this video, we're going to do an analysis of Adrian 1996 victory in 1000 BC. He uses the Americans, of course, and I thought it'd be cool to just sit down and do a react video where uh, I just analyze this and we'll put this on double speed. And the point of this video will be to learn as much as we can about how in the world he did this because uh, he's been grinding real hard. He's on our discord server. Uh, he discusses his strategies with us, lets us know. So if you want to be involved with that Civ Rev discussion, definitely join our Discord server. We have a lot of great discussion on Civ Rev. And uh, it's pretty amazing. My personal best is a 400 BC, but he got pretty lucky on this run. And as of late, he's been on a tear, honestly. So definitely go check out his channel and subscribe. And if you enjoy uh, Civ Rev gaming and all the... I got a lot of random stuff going on in this channel, but definitely if you're interested in the content we have here, subscribe as well. And uh, I'll do more videos like this. I've been really busy doing game development lately, but I'm about to wrap that game up in about two weeks. Wish list. Yes, you're dead to me if you don't wish list. Never grind online. That's uh, my new marketing strategy. I'm trying to threaten my customers and see how that works. Uh, so check that out on Steam. Never grind online. Go ahead and wish list that. And uh, with that, we'll get started. And uh, we'll see how this goes. And I'm just going to do my best. I have not watched this. I just know that it exists. And I'm going to try to, I'll pause here and there and do some commentary. So he starts out with the scientist. And uh, he's, his starts are a little different from mine. And he's got this pretty good positioning. He's right next to a hut. And see, this is something he does that I don't really do. It's like he will, in my runs, I try to go and find another capital. But it looks like he likes to set up next to a hut. And it's surprising to me how well this works. It's obviously, it must, I don't know if this is the key. I'm sure he does other things a little bit better as well. But he is planting next to a hut. And there are a few reasons for that. First of all, you get the free settler, right? So you can start doing a little bit more a little earlier. Because he's on turn zero. And he's already got a settler, right? And he's got that scientist running around too. We'll see what he does with a scientist. And he takes the militia dude up here. Looks like he's going to research. He p gets horseback riding from the hut. So he's got that on turn two. So what's he going to do with this guy? He's going to run over here and get this hut. Set it to pottery. Okay. And then he picks up 25 gold. So he's got enough to build. So he only has one tree. But he's got... He decides to go with the warrior first instead of the horseman. I could see that for the first unit. That could make sense. It's only 20 gold versus the 40 for a horse. Oh, man. Look at this. See, actually, this is unfortunate. Because he picked up the huts. For those that don't know, when you pick up a hut, it adds, I believe it adds one barbarian. That's why this thing is, like, flagged up the yin-yang now. He's on a hill, which is helping him because he's down to two warriors. And he just found a natural wonder, so that's going to help get him some more gold. Oh, I'm surprised he went back to the capital. And he rushed a horse. So he's going to be able to take this out. Wait, how much gold did he get there? 40 gold. <laughs> I had to, like, speed read that. Just look for the number. Remember, we're on double speed here, so... We're going to have to try to stay on my toes here and keep up with everything he's doing. And he's going in multiple directions. He's spreading out. And he's running around his scientist. This is interesting because he's got a scientist, but he didn't use it for great. He didn't use it for a science. He's just exploring, which is really surprising to me. I wouldn't think that would be super effective. Obviously, it is. So he's spreading out in three directions at this point. It's slightly dangerous because the. Uh, could the Zulu have taken that scientist? Maybe. I'm not sure. Kind of close. He's going to take out this MP warrior so he doesn't get this hut from him. And declare peace. Looks like he's going to go for the capital. Continues expanding to the west and the north. 
Loses a horse. Nothing you can do about that. And picks up a spy. And also a Sites Karakorum over there to the east. And sells the spy immediately. What's he got now? Like three horses? And he's picking up some research in library, uh, alphabet. And he's going to pick up the capital. It's 3300 BC. Also gets a natural wonder. He's up to 11 gold. Uh, 36 gold. Continues exploring for the gold. Looking for those natural wonders. And he should be able to pick up a few more huts here in the next turn. And the scientist just continues running around randomly. And he will finish his alphabet. So now he's going to do pottery. So he's got HBR, alphabet, and now he's going to pottery. No, no wait, he's going to writing. That makes sense. You don't need pottery. I know, it's blasphemy. He's on 3100 BC. Picks up another spy. Which got him some gold, okay. You'll be able to sell that. Looks like the China, oh, the Japanese. They're really easy to conquer. Japanese tend to prioritize the sea tiles a little too much. Looks like he's trying to get some squeeze some money out of these guys. And he picks up a caravan. He's going to run that over to Karakorum. Oh, and there's a settler city that they have over there to the south, so... Pick that up as well, I guess. What's that, his fourth horse? He's got like four horses. So, as soon as he's done with that spy, sells it. Continues running around with the little militia guy. Oh. <laughs> Squeezes him for some money. And content continues spreading. I'm going to have to do that in my next run. The next time I play, I'm going to try a turn zero plant. It should be an easy, yeah, one gold. I wonder if he'll go for the capital here. Probably. Why not, right? He has 100 gold. Did he get the settler bonus? I don't know if he got the free settler. I think he did. I think that's what that one settler was that ran out there. It's going really fast. But I, I figured that the idea is here to understand the strategy, not to overanalyze every little move that he's doing here. We picked up bronze working for free. And another city. And he's going to squeeze him for 25 gold. Five gold? Is it worth it? Whoa! Hold on, how does he have so much gold? Oh, he wants to see if he'll sell. And he asks if he can buy? Why? Oh, just to see what he has. Give me pottery or else. Seems like he's trying to pressure for some kind of... Uh... So what did they do there? So he just agreed on the 25 gold. That's what it looks like. So they're at peace now. So at this point, he has taken out the Zulu and the Mongols. And the way I play, I usually don't like to squeeze... Oh, crap. Did you see that? The way I play, I, l I, d I don't like to eliminate more than two. 
And the reason is usually you can get uh, go in with a spy and steal some great people. Um, and if they're not in the game, then you know you can't steal anything or you can't uh, steal little cities from them and stuff like that. Sometimes it's actually beneficial to have a couple opponents in the game so that you can steal stuff from them. Um, this is an interesting move. He held on to the great scientist to rush currency. That's interesting. I've never tried that. That's an interesting strategy because currency is pretty annoying to research. It's like 80 uh, science, which is kind of annoying at that early stage. Literacy, of course, is another important technology that you want to get. And I assume he's getting close to that. Wait, let's see that again. So he's going to, so he has, still hasn't done writing or code of laws or literacy. So he's going to go with writing. He's going to finish that up. He has to get code of laws. I wonder why currency. I mean, he picks up a galley as well, which is great. It's nice to be able to explore the seas. Getting that boat for free is pretty nice. Uh, what's he going to do with this galley? And the Germans are over here on the southwest corner. Put a squeeze on them. See what they got. Decides to sell. He sold like all kinds of crap. Wait, he sold the boat? The boat? Are you serious? So he sold the boat. Maybe he just felt like it would be too many. He sold the knights and the... Oh my goodness, dude. I would definitely not do that. I was surprised. That's surprising. So he sold the entire knight army. The boat. He's got a ton of gold now. And he sold... Um, what was the other thing he sold there? Oh. And the caravan. Okay. Hold on. What? So he's got... Oh. Oh. Okay. So he's... <laughs> he did this intentionally to make it so that he could get banking. <laughs> I think that's what he's doing. So he rushed currency and then he's going to try to get banking this way. What does that get him? Another 100 gold? He's got 16 per turn. Uh, so that's, if you get banking at this point, that's going to get you what? Another 100. Well, that's kind of nice because that's one of the prerequisites for uh, corporation. Industrialization, which comes before corporation. So, if he gets banking... Okay, he'll get another 100 gold, and that'll set him up pretty well for an expansion stage. And he'll also be able to... He'll be set up nicely to unlock industrialization. All right, so he's just going to continue putting a squeeze on all these little barb huts. Squeeze them out of here. Get them off the map. So he's got writing. And yeah, code of laws and banking. There we go. So he's got like 350s. 70. Wait, what? Is that right? What's it say? No, it's never a good idea to save your game. What does this say? It says, uh. Oh, go slow motion. Here we go. So he gets, he gets writing. I think someone should just uh, download it. What did that say? That was so fast. Okay, the first to discover writing. Okay, so they got a spy. Oh, that's the one I was looking for. With the glasses flying through the air. Yeah, so we got banking. Doesn't that give you 100 gold? 
Is that a bug? I thought banking gave you 100 gold. Because if you're the first to get banking, I thought it gives you 100 gold. It seems like you got screwed out of 100 gold right there. That's why I slowed it down. I felt like... Yeah, because it still has 271. Are you serious? That must be a bug. Chat, correct me. Someone look that up. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to get 100 gold. That's going to drive me crazy. So... Leave a message and let me know if that's a bug. That has to be a bug. So many weird little bugs in this game. So he actually got screwed out of 100 gold. I'm almost positive. All right, let's see what he's going to deal with the Germans. They don't have too much money. Five gold? I don't know. Wait, what? This guy is like a master of getting 25 gold out of these dudes. You're scared of that one little horse? <laughs> Apparently those horses are enough to negotiate a peace deal for 25 gold. Declare war, ask for peace, get 25 gold. Guess that's how it goes. He's expanding eastward. So he's building a lot more horses than I thought he would. Like, he's got, like... Like, why did he... Oh, I guess he just wanted to sell the horses... To hit 20, 250 gold. But then he's building a whole bunch of horses, too. So, I don't know. I feel like... Was that worth it? I mean, obviously, it's working pretty well for him. That's just surprising to me. But I think he has, like, five or six horses right now. It looks like at least six. Probably more. Seven? It's a lot of horses. Looks like he's going to turn that caravan in for gold. So he's switching over to science. He's trusting the science. He believes in science. I believe in science in this game. I believe it unlocks technologies. Holy cow, this dude has so many horses. <sighs> What's crazy is in eight turns he's going to have space flight? If I read the description right, is that right? And then I think he launches it. So some crazy crap's going to be happening here. I'm just trying to figure out how he's going to... I th okay, so he's positioning his horses so that he can expand very... You see how he's using his horses? Yeah. So he's setting it up so they can all leapfrog to each other. There you go. Got another natural wonder, too. Excellent. And he's setting them up so that they can, like, leapfrog around the map. Okay. Very cool. And then, yeah. After that, sell them a tech, why not? He's gonna make them defend. Not really defending, just positioning them so that it doesn't prompt them for a, another turn.
another caravan. That'll help them out a lot on the expansion phase. All right, so we got the Germans, and I think we're missing one other civ. I don't know where the last AI is. So now he has code of laws, so he just switched, and this now he can expand. And he's going to switch over to science. Here come the cities. Sells the horse. Got more gold. Oh. What's he selling those for? 20 gold? Well, how much is he? He's not really losing that much. Positions it there for the access to the die. See a pattern here. One more settler. Interesting positioning in there. Maybe he'll build a market? Because he only has one sea tile there. He does have the oxen, which is nice. Still has 105 gold. Sells the spy. Builds another city. <laughs> this is a lot of cities, man. What's he going to do with that caravan? Seems to be stuck in that corner. So he's really got this whole expansion via horses and leapfrogging across the map and selling the horses. Basically, the horses are facilitating expansion, and then you sell them when you're done with them. Did he have sold the horse right there? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. So many cities. This is crazy. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Takes this guy up. Wait, what? Is he, does he have a unit to take that hut out? What is he doing? That's the beauty of the Americans is they can sell things for the same price that they rush them, which is a bug, but totally ridiculous. And they just left this bug in. I don't know why they did, but they did.
Need a city counter. Up in the corner. You're counting, right? This is a tough spot right here. It's a good production spot, if anything. I guess the question is, how many cities can he pop out in one turn? He's willing to sell that horse just to get one more out. Complete literacy for sure on this turn. Up to 97 science per turn. And 2300 BC. I guess he's going to use that militia to block the Germans. He could set up a little fortress right there. And that'll discourage them, even though it's only a militia guy. Pumps out a boat on both sides. I didn't see a settler in them, so I don't know what he's planning to do there. But he is going for irrigation immediately after literacy, so that's gonna that'll increase all these cities by one population. is the plan now? Looks like he's... Wait, what? Archers? Why do you do that? Okay. Not sure why he sold the horse on the last turn. Now I think he's hoping for text from huts. <clears throat> he wants to cram these cities in as much as possible. Oh, he's got a hut. Question is, what does he do? He skips it for now. I'm pretty sure it's a tactical maneuver. The goal is to get, you want to get technologies from these huts. That's the ideal. So maybe he's saving them for when the time's right. Still has peace negotiated with both AI for at least five more turns. There's industrialization. Yeah, I think it's time to get that. Yep. So he's got industrialization. Corporation is also available. He could possibly pick up corporation right here. In 2100 BC. Got 
settler on this side as well. Here we go for corporation. Uh, many have wondered what the prerequisite is for getting text from huts in the late game. Like, is it after you get code of laws or certain technology or a certain turn number? Not sure. Maybe it's 2500 BC. I'm not totally certain what that triggers that. Because it, it becomes impossible at a certain point. You can get a technology when it's like zero. When you're at zero text. It's possible to get it uh, horseback riding. Uh, but for a while, that becomes disabled. And you can't get a tech again from a hut. Or from a, a barb hut or a friendly hut. That doesn't seem to become possible again until later. And I'm not sure what triggers that. I don't know if you need, like... Maybe it's... 14 technologies that may be the trigger possibly because he just I think he just hit 14 techs I believe I can't see what how many techs he has right now uh, it looks like he's moving everything over to technology micromanage these cities for sure so the game will not manage them as well as a human can damn I ran out of water already I'd be hydrated for these Looks like he's science maxing bros. Now my question is, is he trying to have a production city? I haven't seen one and it doesn't seem like it's part of his strategy. He's at 133, 183 tech per turn right now. So what's he going to go for now? Democracy? All right, so he's out of Republic mode. Does he continue expanding? Wait, what? Damn, dude. University? So he's gonna... He just picked up the 50% bonus from democracy. And now he's gonna go for university. Now that he's in democracy, it's going to... Uh, be a little more painful to expand. But that's probably fine because he has poor population with new cities, so it's a little easier to manage that. And he has industri industrialization and corporations, so he should be able to expand without a problem. Question is when do you when do you stop expanding, right? I guess you just always expand. If you have land, you expand. That rhymes, so that'll make it easier to remember. If you have land, you should expand. Roads? Why? Why is he building roads? I don't understand. I would never do that, so I'm curious why he did that. Oh, really? 
How bold. That was a bold move. Just running around Japan. They have peace, but... Interesting. Yeah. So he's defending with a horseman right there. See how he deals with that. He has to deal with that. Looks like a pikeman's running around. It's getting low on gold. We'll see what he does here. Probably have to end the turn if he doesn't have any gold. And not expand anymore. So he has the picks it goes for navigation. He wants the East India Company. He just picked up the plus one bonus to every city from university. Is it plus one or two? He's one. Lots of gold, thanks to industrialization and corpor corporation. Continues expanding. His little island adventure continues. It's 1900 BC. Wait, what? Building roads? Why is he building roads? Yeah, he's using roads. <laughs> Surprising. Very interesting. Paying to get extra steps in. Must work. Certain circumstances. Wait, what? Another road? This road business is hilarious. So what, he's gonna pump up another settler planet right there? Why there? I'm not sure why he planted in the middle. Why not on the coastline? I'm sure there's some reason, but I'm not quite sure why he would do that. Maybe we'll see what he's thinking. Nice little island spot right there. So, as we die in a whale. Monarchy. Looks like you switched over to monarchy. Oh. 
rushes a horse just so he can run over and plant that city immediately. So with Monarchy, he gets the great person, but he also gets... He gets the great person, but also the die bonus. Which helps on tech per turn. What do you get? Electronics? So that's pretty fortunate. Lots of huts. It's always fortunate. Definitely want that. Over a thousand gold now. And continues expanding. Why not? Squeeze in two more cities right there in the corner. Let's see what he does. Yep. Here comes the road. Yep. And he's going to plant right in the bottom left, isn't he? Right there. Oh, what? Why? Why do you do that? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that was there. Did that surprise him? Uh, what technology is he going to try to get from it? Checking out his tech planner. I think he wants atomic theory. Is he gonna wait a turn? He might try to wait a turn. And just hope that he gets it next turn. Going with invention. See a lot happen in the next two turns. Let's see what he opts for. Mass media would get you plus one to every city. That 17 techs still does not have East India Company. Sold a monarchy. They ain't got no money. Okay. Not sure if there was a reason for that specifically. Sell the monarchy you can uh they tend to be less aggressive. I don't know. It might give you culture problems though. You definitely don't want the AI to go fundamentalism or something like that. That can be annoying. Really trying to figure out how to make something good happen here in the corner. How many cities are we looking at? So we went and got the natural wonder. 
Did he go for math? Oh, just for the money? So if he goes for math, he'll get an overflow. And now he's going for advanced flight. Maybe that's what he's trying to go for here. I think he may be trying to get advanced flight from a hut. Sets it to military industrial complex. So, so it'll leave him alone. Stop bugging me. It's annoying. cities right here. Picks up advanced flight from a hut. Two more cities here on the corner. How many Detroits can you possibly want? Isn't one enough? What's that? I mean, it looks like he has a great explorer and a scientist sitting around. is a bomber. Go explore with that. Oh! Look at that. School of Confucius is over there. I don't know how the heck he's going to make use of that. It's way over there. be better to get gold, I guess, in this situation. What would you even benefit you at this point? I don't think Ark of the Covenant would be that great. I mean, you get the culture. Helps a little bit. And now he's going to explore with bombers. He's looking for the city of Atlantis. Build another city or two. Take advantage of that die. Vicky has one more settler. Pop it out right there. One more settler. Pop it right in this corner. Perfect. Another die spot. Difficult to even unlock the technologies fast enough. <laughs> it's like more than it's like he's got more than one per turn. Invention. Eight hundred per turn. I mean that's only it only takes three hundred to unlock it, so. Invention, I suppose, will help you get another great person. Which could help. Science maxing. Managing those cities. Well, 
I heckin' love science. I think he gets space flight next turn. I think he's going to get it with a great scientist. I think you need like 800 something in order to be able to unlock space flight. Like, so the game is based on, uh, you know, that little science menu pops up and prompts you to unlock, uh, pick a science that list is filtered it's all unlocked technologies that you have at least you have to make a certain amount of tech per turn so it's based on your rate of technology you have to be able to finish it in 10 turns or less otherwise it won't even allow you to do it i think space flight is like Twelve hundred? What is it? Some crazy number. No, eight. It's like eight thousand or something, isn't it? Anyway, so you have to be around eight hundred tech per turn. I can't remember the exact number right now, but it's around there, if I remember right. I should have it memorized because it's a pretty important number in this game. He's at eight eighty-two, so I think he's good to go. Sticking with invention. I was wondering if he was going to go uh, with mass media. I mean, that's a, mass media seems awfully good at this stage, right? Looks like he picked up uh, three technologies, masonry and construction, and something else. Kind of a whatever at this point. Is he rushing libraries? Yep. He's pushing hard for science at this point. If you're rushing libraries, yeah, you're going to get a lot more science. Sometimes after you rush those libraries, you have to re-manage your tiles, which can be kind of annoying to check in. Oh, I think he's looking for the cities that have the best science output, so he's going to that list. It'd be nice if you could sort that list. Like, there it is, space flight, eight, per turn, eight, eight turns. No, I don't think he ever finished East India Company, <laughs> which is insane. Is it still there? I think it is. Did I miss it? Did he actually build it? Does this even matter? I don't think so. Some extra gold? Is he going to rush it now? Yeah. So there you go. There's space flight, but now the hard part is you're gonna have to build all of this crap, right? Well, that'll help. Why not, man? Go get it. Sell those guys. Yeah, just sell them. Uh, 
might be worth. I don't know if it's worth driving that guy over. Yeah, steam power. He's gonna make a boat. Tells him a few texts. Okay. Yes, picked up another natural wonder. I think he's looking for places with good production. Trying to pick up a habitation module. So at this point, he has to build habitation module. If you get four propulsion modules, that'll make it the fastest. Uh, what, what else does he need? Like a fuel pod? Whatever that other thing is. So at this point, it's just a squeeze to see how in the world he can afford all this stuff. support he picked up engineering that'll help him build slightly faster so we'll see what pieces he gets here I think that was the life support habitation culture problem. That's okay. I think that's a result of selling monarchy. Whatever. I think he's gonna win. He's got this. Courthouses? Really? Building courthouses. Uh, I wonder why. Does that have to do with culture? I don't know. Not sure why he's doing that. Apollo. Guess he just wants it to leave him alone. Setting most of the buildings to Apollo. Picking up a thousand gold per turn and a thousand science. In 1500 BC. Okay. Another, what, 400 gold right there? What's the 300? Whatever it was. He has a lot of gold. Looks like he completed another propulsion module there. Builds another propulsion module. Yeah, he hasn't even researched navigation. 
So he definitely doesn't have East India, which is amazing. One more, and he can launch it. Or he can might as well just launch it now. He, yeah, he can build it. You didn't build that. Should be able to launch it, right? it now. Now the crazy thing is, is that he has another game where he launches it in 1900? I think if I'm remembering right, I think he has another game where he launches in 1900. And I'll cover that one too in a future video. Because obviously this strategy works very well. So at this point, all he has to do is hang on for a couple turns while the spaceship has to get there. It takes a few turns. Picks up railroad, why not? Uh, let's see. How long has this video been? This thing tell me? whole dashboard of metrics and I don't see the duration anywhere. Oh, a little over an hour. So I think one more turn and he's there. I think he's already there. Oh, I think at this point it actually doesn't even matter because I don't think it allows the spaceship to actually show up until I think the launch is the only thing that matters because this whole victory thing is bugged like yeah let's see when oh. <laughs> started launching nukes and stuff like that let me see does it where is the actual launch oh he's launching nukes and everything we might as well watch that Jap the Americans nuking the Japanese great very nice. Whoa, dude, look at that curvature. Curvature and nuclear bombs. Oh! <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> there you go, SDM. <laughs> <laughs> the STI. I didn't know that was in here. That's pretty funny. What the hell? <laughs> they actually, how did the AI actually build the STI system? I've, I don't think I've ever seen that in all of my time. It's like the worst animation, by the way. <laughs> they put in this giant fancy nuclear bomb animation, and this is what... SDI looks like like this should blow it up in the air like what in the world I don't know. anyway I hope that helped uh, just kind of going through that with me seeing how he did it seeing obviously the leapfrog strategy with the horses works really well uh, he builds the horses positions them right before he gets Republic and yeah just an unbelievable number of cities Planting the city early next to a barbarian uh, village. That works really well, too. Uh, there were a lot, there's a lot of things to unpack and take away from this. And again, we could discuss this further in our CivRev channel and Discord. It always helps to have other people discussing and analyzing everything that went on. And I'll take a look at the other victory that he has as well he has a few that he's done he's just been on a tear lately and again check out his channel i'll link that in the comments below 
and I'll pin it and everything. Uh, so thanks for joining and I hope you enjoyed this video where we checked out the strategies that he used for this amazing victory. That was really pretty cool. So I'll see you guys next video. Don't forget to subscribe, man. That's what real subscribers, that's what real YouTubers do. They remind you to subscribe. So don't forget to do that. All right. See you guys next time.